What's good, Internet? It's Friday, February 28th, 2020, and you are listening to Waypoint Radio, episode 295. I'm your host, Austin Walker. I'm joined today by Kato in the booth. Is that a leap year? It's a leap year. 29th is tomorrow. Damn. Get ready. Get ready, because it's that's it. There's we get an extra it. day. One more day in February. That her, hmm. Hooray. <laughs> Patrick Klepik, how are you doing? This isn't going to make sense to the post pod, but The Final Destination, originally a script written as an episode for The X Files. What? The X Files? Huh. Oh, sure. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Because it was uh, yeah. written by um, uh, an X Files writer. Huh. That's wild. And they were like, anyway. no. And he was like, I'll show you. I'll show everyone. <laughs> I'm no, they said, actually, part. this is too good for The X Files. Oh. You should go pitch a, th- a movie. Oh. Well, it's yeah. sort of reminiscent That's of that good. one where the insurance uh, adjuster like has like premonitions about who's going to die. Uh, and it's played by Peter Boyle. God, that's a great fucking episode. And Rob Zachney here doing the thing Rob Zachney does best, <laughs> making me want to watch other things, making me want to go into the into the archive and enjoy the best that culture has to offer. Hi, Rob. How are you doing today? You were in this city, and I missed you this week, and I feel bad about that. Well, I was there very, very briefly, though, yeah, and I was yeah. in Manhattan. Yeah, and I like <laughs> so that was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> what were you in Manhattan doing? I was seeing Baldur's Gate 3. A video game that I think for many of us we thought would never come. Uh, or at least th- it felt that way for 15 years or whatever, right? Um, the the Baldur's Gate s- series, uh, extremely well-regarded D&D isometric RPG uh, of a style. Origins of Bioware. Yeah, absolutely. Or, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Origins of Bioware. It's actually just a story about <laughs> the tragic uh, and heroic arc that Bioware has gone on <laughs> for the last 30 years. Uh, how was Baldur's Gate 3? You're, you're two low-level healers, and <laughs> you get to you, you the doctors. Up, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah uh, of course. Yeah. God. Uh, Does anyone even yeah, know who so, the doctors are? Kato, do you know who the doctors are? Who? Oh, we've passed. God damn we've it. done it. This is like when Natalie didn't know anything about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> it's happening again. It's happening Wait, again. Wait, what are you talking about? The doctors? In what? Patrick? <laughs> wow. You know who just doesn't understand the framing. I guess so. No, I don't. I, I missed what I the missed Bioware, the Bioware doctors. doctors. Oh, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah Medical doctors, yes, who got oh, out of med the school. Fuck? They were early in their Bioware. careers. Bioware, and yeah, uh, yeah okay. Um, also, their first game was actually a mech game, so that's important. What? To me. It's called Shattered Steel. Yeah, <laughs> what the great game. That game's good. Time. <laughs> they, they should make another yeah. mech game. Oh, oh well. Yes, and I, I'm friends on I'm friends on Facebook with uh, Ray, uh, one of the doctors, mm-hmm. and he's just. He just enjoying retire. Like, is that beer doctor? Only retire- like, is the one that- who went beer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the other one. Okay. Greg's the yeah. One of them went, went deep beer. into craft beer making. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then Ray's just—he's like out fly fishing. Just his pictures are just Fucking wow. Good. You know what would be cool to like found a, a really uh, important RPG studio, make a shitload of money, make one of the most important trilogies in video games. Fuck off and just watch it burn and go. I'm going fly fishing. God. God. Uh, so I'm yeah. sure he didn't say I'm going to watch it burn, but <laughs> probably, probably did not. Uh, talk to me about Baldur's Gate three. Also, wait, are you a Baldur's Gate guy? Rob? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> nor nor have you played Divinity Original Sin 1 or 2, right? Yeah. I was just there to see this thing. Right, because this is being made by L- Larian, right? Is that that's the mm-hmm. studio yeah. behind Divinity Original Sin. Uh and they picked up the Baldur's Gate franchise uh and and Rob is the perfect person to get a fresh look. Absolutely. <laughs> On a much but I don't give a shit. Yeah, no, totally, a hundred percent. And guess and what? Neither does like, Kato. Neither do so yeah. many other people right. who don't have that history. They, they you got to make a hard pitch. To, you got to make a hard sell to people who don't have that that nostalgia. What's it look like? It looks really, really good. Uh, let's see where to start. Um, okay, the setup for the game is actually really cool. I was sharing this uh, the opening cinematic with Patrick the other day. 
Uh, basically, it opens a board like in this like mind flare chamber. And if you don't know what a mind flayer is, oh, yeah. Cam Kunzelman wrote a good piece about like their history as a villain in D and D. But basically, mind flayers are these creatures that use like uh, psychic mind control to enslave other creatures and bend them to their will, and eventually consume them and create like an empire of of mind flayers uh, served by like you know chattel slaves. That They're empire, like very Lovecraftian, like they yeah. have you know all the tentacles the, the, yeah. and sort of thing. Yeah, uh, that empire, of course, uh, was brought down by very pissed off ex slaves, and now the mind <laughs> players are kind of hunted uh, wherever they go, and wherever you got wherever you see one mind player, you really got to come down hard on them because that's one is one too many. Uh, yeah. they, they always just make more mind players. Uh, the game opens with. A bunch of characters imprisoned in this like mind flare chamber. This and is the most, it is this is the most that game style of intro I've ever heard you describe. <laughs> I've ever heard described. And uh the first thing that happens is you see the mind flare infecting these characters with a mind flare tadpole. Nah. Um, pretty Pretty graphically burrows in through characters' eyeballs. No, um, is, uh, the the <laughs> the the graphic nature of this is worse than anything we will see in a post pod where we watch the trailer for Candyman. Yes. Quite honestly, <laughs> yeah, th- th- this thing this thing it's it's nasty. Uh, also, which also this game is getting an eighteen rating, so they're just good. Like, they're just going. Everything's for it. on the table for that. Yeah, um, so, it's like, also just it looks. It. You said that, and my first thought was. It can't be that graphic. I've seen Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate is like an isometric <laughs> RPG from a very far uh-huh. distance. And then I looked at screenshots because some screenshots leaked today. Mm. I guess that by the time this comes out, this episode comes out, there will be yeah. gameplay footage because it will be post embargo. Um, but man, this doesn't this looks good. This looks visually way different than what I had in my mind. Uh, which was just going to be another, well, like another isometric RPG. And I'm not, I think you can do a lot of, you can do a lot inside of the isometric RPG space in terms of style and design and, and art. Um, but, but I was not expecting, I was not expecting contemporary shot reverse shot uh, <laughs> style dialogue trees and stuff like that. Yeah, they definitely have uh, taken steps to modern, like, to update presentation in that way. So like setting wise and thematically, it should probably feel like what people associate with Baldur's Gate, but it will also feel like a Larian game, like a modern RPG. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, like it turns out this is all board a mind flare ship. Mind flare is being right. chased. Um, the chase goes bad. And basically all these characters get scattered during a, during the crash of this like mind flare ship. And early on, they all, start encountering each other and that, that like you go hard cut from the cinematic to character creation. Okay. Uh, and at that point you can choose whatever your background, you were a point of view character in that se- sequence who got infected with the mind flare tadpole. Damn. Uh, but you have your option of, you can choose and like in the divinity series, you can have an origin story character, which is like a pre-made character with a specific uh, backstory behind mm-hmm. them, or you can sort of roll your own. And uh, I asked about this, like, it sort of seemed like it'd be a richer narrative experience to be an origin story character, but their kind of approach is, uh, and when they do the first testing of the game, they they do it with a custom generated character. Uh, in lieu of the custom backstory, choices about race, social background, and uh, character class are going to sort of inform the specific terrain of your of your character's backstory and uh what sort of struggles they're going to have over the course of the plot but anyway you you come out of character creation and you start running into the other characters who were in that chamber and everyone's like realizing oh we've got like a week at best to get ahead of this infection before we were basically enslaved and then turned into a mind flare uh, so how, like Fuck. so it's it's very There's much a, a um, clock. I love it. Yeah, it's very <laughs> I much said that like a, um, a ragged band. <laughs> Good. Sorry. Continue. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's but it's got that cool vibe of uh, this is a group of characters who probably don't belong together, right? The only thing holding this group together is they are all basically identically screwed, right. <laughs> and they're all desperately trying to figure out like how can we not die from this mind flayer infection. And also some of them are like, how do we also prevent ourselves from being like patient zero for a mind flare like invasion of the world? Whereas others are kind of just like, I just don't want to die, but everyone else can get fucked. Right. Uh, so that's that's so kind of the, the the tension. The tadpole will turn you into a mind flare. Yeah. OK, OK. I just don't want to work through. I didn't know. Maybe it turned. And then, is it like a Borg thing where you get connected to like a larger hive mind? Like, is there like a central mind flare and then there are commanders who are like given armies underneath? Uh, we're starting to get into like lore stuff that I probably like can't. <laughs> no, My understanding is ultimately. You, can I just tell you? Are, yes. I want to know what you believe is true. We're, I'll put a this is non-canon. This is only canon for the Zach universe. But you tell <laughs> me how mind flyers work. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, they do like share a hive intelligence and hive knowledge, but at the same time, like an individual mind flayer out in the world can still have self-directed action. It's not quite totally Borg like it appears to be like a mind flayer can off be doing its own stuff. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is being centrally directed by like one will um, like Independence Day. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty basic, much. Those are mind flayers, basically. Their, their heads are a little bigger, huh. which is saying something. <laughs> but that's basically what they are. Yeah. Man, that fucking Independence Day scene where an alien shows up. Whew, they got an alien back there. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> uh, Great movie. Holds up very well. So then it's it's also a Larry in style isometric RPG, turn-based combat. Is there focus on the same sort of tactical maneuvering stuff that people love from the... Am I blowing up uh, barrels so that they'll oh, run into dude, some up fire? Oh, you're it, it was the most. OK, so the event was uh, Larian CEO uh, Sven Vinka uh, was doing the most Leroy Jenkins playthrough of this demo uh, that mm -hmm. I could imagine. And I asked about it later, like, is this his shtick or is this just how he is? And the answer is basically both. Uh, but he was basically this was the last stop on the press tour. And at this point, apparently, he was going fully into what can I make happen in the system now? Um, so it was interesting. He was definitely playing suboptimally uh, to start and try for the low percentage plays because earlier in the press tour, he got on board with the more straightforward stuff. Yeah. So he was all about the can I create weird chain reactions using our physics, using spell effects, using explosives to accomplish things. Uh, and so this is a... This, like, from what we saw, tends to be a game with tons of opportunities for slapstick uh, slash environmental solutions to puzzles. Um, and that's kind of an ethos that's sort of throughout the team. At one point, we were shown a chamber with a bunch of huge, uh, like, braziers hanging from the ceiling. And once the level designer put those braziers in, the combat designer immediately said, well, can those fall to the floor yeah. and crush people beneath them? And they couldn't. But once the question had been, been asked, they they had to modify the game so that the braziers were now an active environmental object and could be used to crush people standing beneath it. Sure. So that's kind of like the procedure this team tends to follow. Well, like in, in Original Sin 1, which is the one I've played, I have not played uh, 2 yet, though I'm, I hope to play it uh, before Baldur's Gate 3 comes out. One of the things that you could – I don't know if you can do this in 2, but in 1 – you know the whole ethos of the combat ethos of like of this these these games from Larian are about these chain reactions and how the different things play off each other and like one of the things you could do in Original Sin One was like before you actually initiated combat you could actually sort of if you walked up to the line before the game would transition from passive to active you could kind of set things up in your favor. So what you'd do is you'd like quick save, you'd walk up to a group of enemies and you would see it a barrel that was very clearly an oil barrel and you'd shoot that open. And then that would still not trigger the combat sequence and you'd shoot a fire arrow or a fire spell and everyone would be on fire. And then you walk forward into the combat sequence and everybody you're about to fight is already on yes. fucking fire. Great. So like they they turn to you like, Ah, look, the interloper. <laughs> and then they're like, Oof. negative two, yeah. negative seven. And like, as they walk to you, they're already, t and like, there, there are just ways that the game has a playfulness in which it runs a fine line between, are you exploiting things 
or is it just allowing you to do things if you're paying attention to how the reactions, how the world is set up? And I'm so curious to see that original Sin 2, and I've also been curious to see how would they do that in a world like Baldur's Gate, which is rooted in D&D, which, like, you know, I'm not super familiar with that that space, but... I was I was like, would they feel restrained? Would they feel like, oh, we're working within an existing rule set? Are people going to be angry if we let them, <laughs> you know, fuck with this, fuck with the systems in a way that has been at the heart of the uh, original Sin games? Yeah, I was actually curious about this, too, because they're very pointed about everything in the game is basically referring back to the D&D system. Mm-hmm. The game design is built around, uh, you know, D- D&D 5th edition. Uh, or what? What is the what is the edition fifth, right now called? Fifth, it's, it's fifth. Yeah. Okay. I Why did like, they say something else? Five E. No, 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 no. I'm just I'm I'm trying to remember. There's the edition everybody hated. And it's then four. It was like yeah, well, everyone. Yeah. Uh, it was huge, and also yeah. a lot of a lot of people who had loved three point five really hated four because it was going for this different yeah. thing. Some people it has its defenders. Which Pathfinder came out. Which you right exactly Pathfinder. Yeah. And anyway, yeah. we we right. don't have time to litigate <laughs> the last. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking 50 years. Uh, So, like, the way they're going about it is the game is constantly, like, you know when you're playing D&D and, uh, you know, the DM just rolls a die behind the screen. You don't know what that means, but, like, a check has happened. The game is constantly doing that. So, like, in one sequence, uh, a character goes into an obviously fucking haunted crypt. Uh, There's, like... (laughs) There's, like, heavily armed skeletons, like, <laughs> littered around this, like, central mm. grave. And mm. uh, Sven realized, like, okay, those things are going to come alive. So I'm going to take, I'm going to open the skeleton's inventory right now while they're dead. And I'm going to take their weapons away from them. Oh, and that's so throw good. them across the room. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but then he goes into, like, the central crypt area, and his rogue starts... Uh, having to pass this chain of like balance checks because the floor is slick, but he doesn't pass his perception check to wonder why the floor might be slick (laughs) or if there's anything else nearby that could like interface with that. And so he goes up to the crypt and like loots it for all its goods. And then like a flame trap in the wall opens up and starts shooting flame across the, uh, you know, across uh, the gravesite. Uh, and it's not it. that the fireball <laughs> will kill you. It is that the fireball will splash into what proves to be grease all around uh-huh. the, uh, the grave. <laughs> and it turns into an entire like flaming pool that nobody can escape. And uh, Sven's character absolutely did not. <laughs> and that's kind of, and, but then when a, uh, smarter character went down there they noted that there was a button on the floor that basically drained the grease trap uh and made it so now you had a pretty straightforward like shot to yeah. uh t- like time the the pulses between the flame uh so like that's that sounds like good how they're doing it <laughs> yeah does it does it um, uh surface all of those roles or just the ones that you succeed at uh so that was a little like because it's doing the thing where in the lower right hand it's got the action log uh-huh. of the game, the event log. Yeah. When the dude failed the check, the perception check, I couldn't see whether or not the game even informed you that there was right. a check, right? right? I saw the game do the check to see whether the rogue stayed on his foot on his feet, and he did. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But you saw him like sort of like ba- like try to catch his balance you saw that you knew something had happened but i'm not sure the game surfaced that there had been some kind of spot check in the background mm-hmm. uh which probably there shouldn't be right like i think that's that works better in a tabletop situation sure. where for a dramatic effect you know the dm just did something right. or is or is messing with your head um but i'm not sure that is as necessary in a game i don't know uh the other thing they're trying to do is there's those background checks that are happening, but the checks that you choose to undertake, then, and most basically like a combat attack, the game will bring up the overlay of the D20 and your target number. The target number has all the modifiers already calculated, so it's an adjusted target number that your D20 has to hit, so you don't like modify the roll. Right. Um, you just, the, the drama is just seeing the die spin 
and did you pass this thing Mm -hmm. or not? And it did a pretty effective job of like evoking the weird uncanny tension of a D and D session. Uh, Vinka had really bad luck throughout our session. Like, yeah, he was making bad decisions, um, (laughs) but he also had pretty bad luck and it started to be easy checks where it's like, I've just got to roll a three. Here's my D 20. But by that point you realize like (laughs) how good the odds are Mm -hmm. of rolling three or less, uh, you know, on a D 20, right. You start to realize like, yeah, that's the odds are good. You're going to pass this, but the odds are also pretty decent that you won't. (laughs) And that was the kind of session he was having where like difficulty checks of five, he was just totally whiffing and just everything was going wrong. Um, And that same logic is applied to the social interactions in the game, which is a huge component of this. Like, we saw a lot of your Larian-style combat. Uh, Vinka got really hung up on trying to blast an enemy into a pit filled with uh, giant spiders. Um, And (laughs) it worked, except the explosion had a little too much mustard on it, I guess. Uh. And the guy arced over the pit with the spiders and landed safely on the other side and just fucked up the entire party uh in the in the ensuing fight (laughs) um so it was like yeah the physics engine like can can just throw you that kind of outcome but the game is also doing this with social interactions uh so the conversation trees in this are really dense like in some of the leaked screenshots you'll see, and we'll, we'll post a few, uh, you know, once my piece goes up, well, it will be yesterday by the time you're hearing it. Um, but like usually conversations will give you four to six options. It seems like how to yeah. respond to things. That and sounds like th- some of them that does res- sound like Larry and stuff versus versus yep. the way a lot of other of that style of RPG have become, which are much more limited. Yeah. And then a lot of those responses, like some are just, stylistic like oh i want the aggressive response here but then a lot of those responses will also be tied to conscious skill checks right so like it's one thing to be skeptical of something character is saying but it's another to say i want to check to see if this character is lying like does my character believe this person is on the up and up and believe they have insight uh and that will bring up the die roll as well um a lot of the social stuff is built around intra-party interactions. A cool thing that's happening here is every time you camp, you uh, end up like you get a scene of the entire party gathered around a central campfire and you have a chance to go and talk to everybody uh, about what's going on. And those conversations change based on what is happening in the plot. But also characters will listen to the conversations you have with other party members and those kind of like choices made in the conversation with one character will translate to a a relationship you have with someone else. Uh, and so there's like a intra party politics Hmm. that is at work in, uh, Baldur's gate three that seems really interesting. Like it was really striking how many different, approaches there seem to be to just about every encounter, but also so many different directions you could send each of these characters off on. That sounds good. I, uh, yeah. I'm really curious to see this. I, I think this game has the potential to be really, really big given exactly how huge D and D is right now. There is an mm-hmm. audience for D and D today that did not exist when Baldur's gate one and two and shadows of Om came out um, that, could make this that could be there this could be the crossover hit for Larian in a, in the way that like uh Mass Effect was or Co- the way Kotor Sin, was. Yeah, I guess the way Kotor yeah, was. Yeah, I guess original Sin 2 was was pretty damn big though. It is totally, but I dude, you've D and D the uh fifth edition has sold more copies than every previous edition of D D put together. Sure. Um it is having a huge the, moment with people who don't necessarily have uh, because of actual play, because of things like Crit Roll and Adventure Zone, the there is an audience for specifically the world of D&D, the character classes of D&D, and lots of players who would not necessarily go play a Divinity Original Sin 2 because that's sure. not their shit. 
um, and lots of player people who would watch Critical Role and would love to play Critical Role, but or, or play D and D the way that they that they see on Critical Role, but don't have a part or don't have a group of friends who want to play D and D. I I this could be very big for them if it if they stick the landing on it and if it if it's well regarded. Is there going to gonna be co op in this one? Good oh question. yeah yeah yeah. So um, you can you can split the party pretty extensively here. And so there's a couple solutions they have that are interesting, like for uh, utility characters like rogues, when you enter stealth mode, the game goes into six second slices for everybody. Uh, And so that gives everyone a chance to like preposition for like to open up the attack. Yeah. Um, And that's sort of how they coordinate stuff like that and and keep the session synchronized. Um, But also it seems like the party, it's not just you can split up in a level uh, there was a sequence where you dime out a secret camp that is hiding from this from this group of goblins, uh, and you've just infiltrated the goblin camp. You can like tell the goblins where this camp of allies is, and the goblins will run off and burn that camp to the ground. And that lessens the number of enemies that you have to deal with here in the goblin camp. Uh, but just because of the way the game was working, despite the party staying at the goblin camp, we kept getting cuts to the attack ongoing at the uh, friendly NPC camp uh, because that was the allies turn happening. We weren't supposed to see that. It looks like that was uh, just like no characters were there. So like we shouldn't have had to see it, but nevertheless in the world, that attack was the thing that was ongoing. And if you'd wanted to, Half the party could have gone and like maybe defended the uh, allies camp and half the party could have stayed in a completely different part of the world and hit the goblin camp. Uh, I, I asked specifically, like, is that a thing that would be possible here? And you can. So you can definitely you can definitely play it as a group of individual player characters all pursuing their own agenda, all doing their own thing and all trying to sort of haphazardly coordinate actions and intentions uh, throughout the game. So yeah, that stuff, look, that stuff look, looks really promising. Yeah. Cause that was a huge part of original sin two specifically in that I'd heard it was a, just a wonderful experience to play that game with another person be, specifically because you can, it, it, it differs from all sorts of other different co-op games where you don't have to like stick together and do your own thing. You can, you know, you're dropped into someone's world, but you can go off and have different adventures, sync up to your own thing. Like it's just a, it's a different way of playing games that a lot of triple A RPGs have gotten away from when we think of multiplayer or co-op. Those are often either co-op is just it's single player, but ah, you get to control another squad member or it's uh, a discrete multiplayer section. Whereas the Larian games have found a way to, it's kind of a, your own little instanced world um, when you that you can drop in and out of. To the point about sticking the landing, um, I think one of the things that I'm curious to see how it's carried out in execution and also how it will be received. Uh, I don't know much about the Baldur's Gate setting. Maybe this is just endemic to the entire setting. Um, Adam Smith, who's one of the writers on the game, a former colleague who was at RPS mm-hmm. uh, for, for ages, uh, likened Baldur's Gate to like the Gotham city of the D and D world. Um, but that, what that means is a lot of this game is also dealing with, uh, what you call like some grim, dark fantasy tropes. Right. And that means this is a game that's going to be talking about like, uh, things like the plight of refugees, Uh, sort of washing up in imperial centers uh, as a result of like imperialist policies, right? Like these are parts of the game that are going, that are going to be coming up. Uh, There's also going to be, and like you can see it in this, in this playthrough. uh, There's a lot of text around natures of consent and control. Uh, the game hinges on mind controlling enemies uh, mm-hmm. who are, you know, sort of invading your character's minds and bodies. Um, but that sort of theme extends even beyond that to uh, so like the character we saw was this dude, uh, Altarian, who is a evil character and we saw him do a lot of evil shit. But he's also a vampire. He's a vampire rogue. Um <laughs> And for the first time 
in his existence, apparently, he's out from under the thumb of the vampire who's been controlling him for, like, centuries. And he has never been allowed to, like, feed as a vampire. And so one night at camp, we see uh, him take the decision to drink the blood of a fellow party member, uh, the cleric, a woman uh, named Shadowheart. And so you get a sequence of him passing a stealth check and, like, attacking her during the night and draining some of her blood. Um, and like, these are pretty charged themes, right? These are, these are, these are charged uh, topics that the game is getting into. I don't know. Like, I, I think honestly, it's going to be one of those things where of course this is going to resonate differently for different audiences. And that's probably fine. Uh, but I also don't entirely know how well will, that entire team be able to stick this landing, right? Cause there appears to be a fair bit of this content. Uh, and a lot of it seems like it will be challenging to negotiate, but it's so heavy and charged that it is important that you get it right and, and have it uh, go before a lot of audiences. Awesome. I am very, very excited to see what this looks like tonight because they're going to do a stream. Um, oh, uh, we should also point out this game is going to follow the yeah. uh, a model that Larian has done in the past, which is fascinating. And I thought they would not do it. Me for too. Gate 3, but they are, which is that it will launch later this year, but it will launch in early access. And what Larian has done in the past is that uh, they have released their RPGs in early access for anywhere from six months to a year, I believe in which they have, like, you know, a framework of the game. There's a lot to dig into, but they consider, like, they do, like, a true, like, when we use the term beta test, like, we've lost sight of what that means, mm -hmm. which is that it is often just pre-release hype and marketing it's before a demo the game is released. Now. Yeah, it's yeah. a demo. And like, maybe there are balance, you know, there are low-key tweaks that are happening that are that influence the, the last or, minutes of development or they're beta testing their back end to see if the servers can handle the server something. And, stuff yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this, they true Larian has truly um, embraced the idea that they want their players to influence like huge chunks of the game. You know, it's not like they're going to throw out all their work, but that this is truly something we're like, Hey, what do you think of it so far? How, we're going to do the polish phase with you and my understanding, you know, I didn't play Original Sin 2, Original Sin in its early access stages, but then there were like sub real substantive changes that were responsive to player behavior and player feedback that made the games tremendously better as a result, where you could enjoy that process. It was sort of like, uh, you know, what uh, Supergiant's doing with Hades, a game that people mm -hmm. have said when it came out in early access was already great, and then it's become like a thousand times better um, over the course of that um, development, but that uh, to do it on the scale of a Baldur's Gate three, I think is is risky in a way that I didn't expect them to do. But I'm excited that they're going to continue to do that process because I think, you know, how many times have we played you know big budget video games it's, that where maybe they would have benefited from an early access period, you know, a Fallout seventy six or right. um, a uh, what's the what's the other one I'm trying to think come to mind? But anyway, there are lots of games where they could have benefited from six months of just hey. Want to come play this game with us and see where it goes? And uh, I, I think it's fascinating that they're going to continue to do that with Baldur's Gate. Totally. Uh, I'm excited to see it. I'm I'm excited to play it. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about something else. Unless, Rob, you have any other last thoughts on Baldur's Gate before we... All right. Going right to break. BRB. We are back, Patrick. Uh, I've heard that you've been sleeping lately. Damn. No, man. untrue. Actually, oh, wait, no. Are you okay? Uh, kind of I've, had a, I've had a cold, and so <laughs> oh, buddy, I haven't really uh -huh. been sleeping that well. That's you not know, good. well. Just got strep, so that was worth. So that is worth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to figure out a way to like dreams. No, you no, I hear you. you got dreams. I just wanted to clarify for the for the listener at home. You know, I got to. I got to be truthful. You right, know, you're yeah, a journalist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no lies, no ideology. You're not allowed to support any political None. candidates. Uh, uh, talk, talk to me about dreams. You've been playing dreams. Dreams is out. I guess one. In case you missed it, dreams came out right. Did it? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah dude. So it came out two weeks ago. 
Uh, Wait. In fact, I can mark this month. Uh, I I downloaded it, got an early code, mm-hmm. and then started playing it. And I was like, that that evening, I, I remember telling our Slack channel, I was like, hey, feel a little weird. I'm going to check out like an hour early. I'm just going to like screw around in dreams. Like that's the beginning of the flu that knocked me out for four to five days two weeks ago. And then coming back, it's like, I'm going to check out dreams again and then immediately get a cold. So apparently I just <laughs> dreams is just like lowers my immune system and makes me. Uh, so if I have the coronavirus in a couple of weeks, blame dreams is, wow. is basically what I'm saying. Jeez. Um Hey, man, I listened to The Daily today, and uh, I wasn't kind of freaked out, and The Daily kind of freaked me out, but trying to be cool about it. Uh I'm going to go to Costco and order some food that can sit in the basement for a month. Um, Anyway, Mm. dreams. Uh, I decided I was kind of like – I was trying to find an angle, and I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just do as a way to get into it is that I'll do like a big roundup of – you know, a a lot of the coverage of dreams in the past couple of weeks has been sort of the easy pickings – for a lot of publications or YouTube channels in which it's like, hey, look at what people are making in dreams, which is that they are recreating existing experiences. Look how they managed to do Dead Space. Look how they managed to do the sequence of the uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima uh, trailer. And it, it is truly impressive. And as I was collecting that stuff, I was like kind of like scrolling through the Dreams Reddit. There was uh, like the top rated post from like the last two weeks was people being uh, – it was like the Drake meme of like, you know, uh, really original, cool things happening in uh-huh. dreams. Uh, like, like love it. Like journalists hate it. Like, but ah, you made Dead Space in dreams. Like, love it. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. I feel called out as I look through this Reddit, <laughs> looking through recreations of games. I was like, all right. Is so that I stopped. why you just started watching food? Yeah, dreams? that is why I started watching. Right. So I took those links. And I was like, I'm still gonna do that. I'm still gonna do that post because it's still fascinating. Mm-hmm. But I feel called out by this Reddit, and I was like, all right, I want to go find weird stuff. And so I loaded into Dreams, and I was like, I want to see not what it's recommending to me. I want to see what it's not recommending. I was like, I want to go down in the dirt. I want to see what it's been liked four <laughs> roll around or five mud. times. Yeah. Show I me just want to be in the Just show me by recent. Show me the new. Don't show me what's voted yes. best. Show yes. me what's, what's made new. a second ago by Not mistake. noteworthy. <laughs> yes. What's new? Yeah. Um and Patrick uh, doesn't want dreams. He wants fantasies. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, if I could literally like sort uh, by least amount of thumbs up, uh, it's what I would do in dreams. And so the way I did that was just picking out keywords and then just seeing where that would take me. So what you can do. Oh, God. As a Mario Maker uh, fan <laughs> who is just mad at how Nintendo handles that. <laughs> one of the key things that Nintendo didn't do in Mario Maker 1 or 2 was... Uh, and two, they introduced tags. And the problem is they introduced like eight tags that are very generic and not particularly interesting or illustrative. And they did not allow the community to create their own tags because what tags allow you to do is to create communities around very specific ideas of levels. And lacking that, you're going to box in the types of levels that can become popular because because it's difficult for them to be discovered. And what uh, Media Molecule does in Dreams is you can make whatever you want. You can you can make your own tags. I'm not now. I'm sure they can be monitored. They can be removed. Um, although we'll get into what level of monitoring and removing that <laughs> Media Molecule is or isn't doing uh-huh. in Dreams. Um, but what it allows is like, for example, I saw tags that were different YouTube creators where there's like, hey, like I want to do a bunch of Dream stuff. Um, like put in this tag and that means that like I know you're a fan, I know you're watching and I can go through that. So I saw like PewDiePie and you know uh, Jacksepticeye and like others. But like I was like that's cool. That's I like the fact that you can do that in the community. So I like I want to just like start following like a tag hole and just see like where that takes me. And so uh I like searched I can't remember what got me started on this. But I just searched for food. Mm. And when I searched for food, I just started finding people doing these different uh, mini game jams in dreams mm. uh, for and one was like a still light or one was like a breakfast one. And so if you go back to my Twitter uh, account from a couple of days earlier this week, I found people doing under the tag still life, um, them trying to do it was a competition to create realistic looking food in dreams. Like and the closest comparison I could make is if you played Final Fantasy 15, yeah. one of the true joys of that game was that Square took the time to just make unbelievably realistic, gorgeous looking food in that game that you would make when you were camping. And people have made just incredible works in dreams that look just delicious. It's a it's a it's a Coke, 
It's a hot dog that has some curious bumps in it, as Kato pointed out. <laughs> the um, bumps. Maybe don't. The bumps are, you know, I don't hey, like them. You always they remind movement. me of like an ATV course with hills, you know? Yeah. There's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, maybe they were cooked on a grill and like they kind of pushed a little Just too hard. Out. You know, I don't know how it was made. <laughs> um, That's part of the reason it was, it was so disturbing, though, was because it otherwise looks really right. Right. It was so like oh, hyper yeah, real that the bumps were like, why is it doing that? Why is this hot dog doing that? <laughs> I hate that. And, and it has like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Why is this hot dog doing that? <laughs> I hate oh, it. Fuck. Anyway, go ahead, Pat, to continue. And, and, and it, it just shows the breadth of, like, what's possible. And, like, you could see, like, the condensation on the, the, the drink. Like, it was just really mm-hmm. impressive. And also, the player, I think the creator can control the variables. But, like, then you can control things like... The, you can turn the toggle the lighting on and off. You can toggle the sort of like Instagram filters. You can toggle uh, the textures, and you can see like the depth at which like the creator went to like sort of create and set the scene. And then it revealed. So then I just started like going down these different rabbit holes of people uh, making different food. It's what got me towards the video that I shared about a hamburger, which was. Uh, they claim it's Yoda. It looked way more Sh- Shrek-like than, than Yoda-like. And it's just him sitting next to a hamburger and it clearly was... like a seven a seven year old going hamburger, 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 hamburger Ooh. into his microphone over and over again. That I Got can people in, import models because I keep seeing these like no. very detailed. They're making those. Yeah, they're in making the, everything. Yeah. That is wild because yeah. that was so definitely can, like the so body you, of a Hulk and the head of a Yoda. That like I assume someone yeah, so had you, just downloaded. Well, they may have downloaded it from another can, creator but who built a creator that did stuff. Correct. Right. Yes. yes. Wow. Um, yeah, and, so the way it works is that you can create uh, assets that other people can use. You don't have to share them. They can be just exclusive to your work. Uh-huh. Um, but you can make them available for remixing, which means that people can take them, put it into their own stuff, release it as a remix. Like that's kind of like the – uh, the verbiage that's used by dreams to, mm-hmm. to, and then I believe you can then link that to the like original thing. So you can sort of see the evolution of like where it came from. Right. Um, First we have Hulk and, and we have Yoda head on. Exactly. Uh huh. <laughs> then we have a cheeseburger that he's eating. <laughs> and I think I, and I found that cheeseburger model. Like it was clearly, you know, obviously not made by the, the, the kid that put together this little scene. Like <laughs> I managed to like then find that cheeseburger. I was like, Oh, right. That, that little asset came from, from here. Um, you, the only thing that allows you, I think, ble- to b- bleed in other stuff is the microphone, right? So you can speak mm. into a microphone to record your own voiceover. But then I watched somebody do a recreation, in, in quotes, of the beginning to A New Hope, in which they are <laughs> uh, clearly just – they, like, played A New Hope YouTube clips and, like <laughs> – Put like the microphone up to that so they could have C3PO and R2D2 um, plugged in and also so they could have Star Wars music. But there are so then yesterday I did a Mario Maker Mornings where I was like, I'm just gonna search Mario terms in dreams. And it isn't it isn't necessarily that people are just recording like an you know an MP3 and then and then importing that into dreams. They are they are clearly making Mario music in the music creation tools in Dreams, and then using that to create like really elaborate Mario sequences. Like some of them, you know, have recreated a triple jump, a long jump, a butt stomp, um, wall jumps. Like it is actually remarkable how close they are getting to the the physics of uh, a Mario game. It doesn't feel huh. great, but it's in, in Dreams. You can unlike a Little Big Planet. The reason I never liked Little Big Planet, I respected it, but didn't like it, was because the physics were the physics. You can alter that part of it. You can do a right. lot of things in Little Big Planet, but the floaty jumping like was just intrinsic. Whereas dreams, if you want to, you can drill down and actually change the way the the, the character is controlled, so that you can create your own physics layer that is fundamentally different than uh, the default. I don't know if you can share that stuff or if that's something you have to do on your own. I would imagine you can share it, but um, yeah, like Media Molecule currently. So I was given a tip on this earlier this week. I didn't have a chance to go into like someone created a character model that I that was like uh not like a highly detailed uh naked woman but like was you know without clothes on like this the, the like just an anatomy uh model and that got taken down by Mita Molecule um and I didn't see the reason that they gave but I assume like sexually suggestive yada 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 mm. and yet man all you got to do is look for a Mario tag and like I can hear like 
the Super Mario Sunshine music. Mm. I can see a Mario <laughs> model. I can see a New Hope, and I understand. Like I understand why that line is being like drawn. Like I like I'm glad that they're not being super specific about like taking down people's clearly copyright infringing material. I like. I even worry about speaking it into the world. Like I wrote a piece this Yahoo week. Anime oh, rules. About Yahoo Anime Rules. Shit. <laughs> no one tell um, Disney that you can watch Star Wars. Don't look up Star Wars. <laughs> um, I, I, I wrote a piece about uh, uh, Milton uh, Gwasti who uh, created over the course of 10 years the Another Metroid 2 remake, uh, which a lot of people consider to be even better than Nintendo's own developed Metroid to remake from some years past with the 3DS. And a line I put in there, because um, I'd heard this from various... Uh, sort of like a fan creators over the years was like, well, if you get a, the, the, you know, what's going to, what's going to kill your project, you know, what, what's going to cause a cease and desist. It's like, ah, if you're good enough to get a Kotaku article, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like, I, you know, I worry about like speaking it into the world because it means, ah, oh, well, if Patrick's talking about, it, he's going to write an article about it, which means we should probably go clean up, you know, what's mm-hmm. happening out mm-hmm. in, in dreams. But I don't, I don't know where they're drawing that line. I will hope they will allow folks to continue to push the line because you could just find such interesting material. Like I feel like so often, like there was this one creator that I found that it's clearly just like a six year old and it was him and his buddy. And they, they it was called the, uh, the toad chorus. And hmm. they had all of these toads from Mario and it was just him and his buddy, like going back and forth between themselves, like doing toad voices. And then one of them, doing uh, Mr. Blue Sky, like the whole song start to finish as a toad chorus. <laughs> and it's it's incredible. Yeah, like great. He does the whole thing, clearly not reading off a lyric sheet, just loves Mr. Blue Sky. Okay, great song. Wow. Like, And I kept waiting for him to fuck it up. And nah, like start to finish. And you just find people doing weird experiments, still life scenes. They actually, there's like this one version of things you can do dreams where it's just a scene. Like you can set up the lighting, you can set up your character models, you can set up the music, and you can't interact with it. You can't do anything. It's just an image, like that has maybe some animations that are related to it, like so that you can see like an object is supposed to be in motion. But it's just a, it's just so weird. Like there's so much strange stuff. I highly recommend if if you decide to get into dreams or you happen to be around dreams, just like pick a tag and just go as deep as you can. Like just use that to like funnel your way to like a weird path. And you will just find the strangest, weirdest stuff that is so fundamentally different. Like dreams is so much cooler than someone made dead space in it, which yeah, is still yeah, cool. Yeah. Yes. It is, it is neat to see the, the the extent to which people can create mechanic. Like I think I saw someone say, well, Look, when games get delayed, it's it's fine because p- someone will just make it in dreams so we can play it before that game actually comes out. Wow. Um, which is funny, but also maybe true to, to a certain extent because like people have recreated like sequences from Cyberpunk 2077 in dreams so you can kind of like actually walk around a variation of that environment. Uh, it's just way cooler than I expected and I had gotten this sense from the coverage of it that, oh, just look at all. And it is because the filters push that up. If you go into dreams... The first thing you're going to see is a lot of media molecule is created and they do tag their own shit. It says like in the corner, like made by media molecule. So you don't get the sense that this should be your expectation for everything in dreams. And then below that is like, what's trending? And it's like Mario level, Zelda level, Dead Space, Mm -hmm. uh, PT. And that stuff's cool. And they have since acknowledged, I think uh, IGN wrote a piece uh, by uh, Matt Kim over there, who's been their news editor for a little while now, wrote a piece that's like, Media Molecule acknowledges that their algorithm is encouraging that what you should create to get noticed is this sort of stuff. And there ha- should be a way to try and balance out the algorithm and what it's pushing um, so that original creations get some more love. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to write a piece probably at this point, not for this week, but for early next week. That's like what I found on my deep dive. I mean, I I post – I don't know if you saw it, Austin, um, but I found – I'm just going to – let me find this. I did not share this with Twitter because I didn't want them to see it before I wrote my piece. Uh, I'm just trying to scroll up to find it. Where Where's the Goku? What? Where Excuse Goku? me? Where's the Goku? Where is the Goku? Oh, uh, oh it would have been just shared in Slack. Dead. He's probably dead. Yeah. Hold on. Let me up. 
upload. Are we yes. hanging out? Uploading Snake Goku. Way. I'm gonna upload Goku. Damn. Because I need you to. I need you to see this. I'd like to see a Goku. Um. I'm waiting on this Goku. Okay, I got it. My hot new single. Put. Put this. Waiting on that podcast. Goku. <laughs> oh go. my God! What is happening? Why don't you just click? We don't. We don't have to. to, to you I know, time play. it out. You just click it, and then you just you just describe yeah, what's well, happening. <laughs> Mickey Mouse and Goku are hanging out, and oh my, okay. Oh my God! What is Mickey Mouse is facing off against Goku? Goku, <laughs> Mickey Mouse killed Goku. I know that because Goku is laying on the ground and says, "I'm dead." No, the end. And then well, I want to say the clip starts with Mickey Mouse saying, "I want to kill someone today." Oh, I didn't see and that. Then, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then. And then Goku says, kill me. Kill me. Kill and me. And Mickey says, okay. This is canon. This is So you have to understand, Saiyans get more powerful after they lose fights. Yeah. Uh, and and oh. even dying. You know, they come back to life. When they come back to life because someone wishes them back to life with the Dragon Balls, they'll come back stronger having been pushed to their limits. Uh, and obviously, King Mickey, as, as a Keyblade Master, could push Goku to his limit. Obviously. So this, this The only up. thing that doesn't really add up is he says, I'm dead. No. It's like he, won't, he was, you know. He's getting more powerful. You can click the. You can, right, true. You can click this other one, Austin. Feel free to. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and that's Yoshi. A, oh, okay, that's so this a, is a picture of a. Hmm. hmm. I don't know if I want to. I'm at a workplace. This is Yoshi looking real <laughs> chubby, who says, "Yoshi, what's that noise?" And then behind him is like the ghost of Shrek, <laughs> but gigantic, <laughs> like the size of well. Yoshi says, die, you fool, and is in Shrek's mouth. And then it says, no, I'm dead, the end. And it's Shrek as a giant steam engine train. <laughs> it's like what? It's like Thomas, the, it's like Shrek the tank engine. Except he's got arms. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he has arms. He's ready to hug you. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So I, I believe this was the same. Um, I, I want to say this was the same, like, seven-year-old that did the, the toad chorus. Mm-hmm. But this stuff is just like, um, like, they feel like experimental short films, and the fact that like this young kid can pull in—I I don't want to dismiss the potential talents of this uh, seven-year-old that I'm maybe uh, uh, highlighting here—but um, I doubt they made these models. But what they did was like pull in the weird shit other people made, and then can use the tools to set up like basic yeah. text and motion, and then add their own um, audio. Like that's cool as hell. Yeah, like, no, that is it's so. Awesome. Fucking yeah. cool and weird and transgressive and just strange. Like I, you can find a billion things like this that are not quote unquote good, but no, are. No, but there's an a outsider a art quality to what people what people who are not necessarily brought through the same schools of education make. When I say schools of education, I mean that in a lowercase s e way. Like I don't mean like specific like. Uh, universities. I mean, they haven't been trained to make stuff in this way. They're just like a, a mishmash. They don't know how 3ds Max of, works, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, well, what if I fucking download this asset and then put this here and grab this song and then I can make some shit? My like one still hang up on this fucking game is that it's so easy to see the version of it that lets you export and own the stuff that you make beyond. And I say it's easy because that's how this was originally pitched. In 2015, Media Molecule was telling journalists that you were going to be able to export your shit into Unity um, and then do with with it what you please. And it's so hard for me to hear that pitch. And five years later, I understand how it happens. You're published by Sony. Sony says, like, no, keep all that value in the ecosystem. The reason people are going to spend $60 on this is because they're going to get this, like, endless like stream of content that they can play only here inside of dreams. And that's, that's speculation on my part that Sony stepped in to, to say that uh, I'll say it's informed speculation uh, in premiere. that. I know that those were conversations happening at media molecule around. It's how do we, world right. World but premiere. like Austin Walker speak. <laughs> uh, you I'll don't say, have to do that. I'm going to put it in post. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but that, that, that is, you know, there is a version of this. You can imagine where at the end of, did you all see, okay. Did you all hear dinosaurs in love? What? Dinosaurs in love. Can we listen to Dinosaurs in Love real quick? Sure. No, sure. Okay, I'm going to link you to Dinosaurs in Love. Um, I like to think Dinosaurs in Love, but think sung to the chorus of California Love. You know, it's it's not quite that, but it isn't <laughs> too far from that in some ways. Uh, it has it has shout a dreamlike to, quality. Shout outs to Slate's uh, Tupac uh, podcast series. Uh, it's really good. Slow Burn, season three. Go listen to it. 
All right, pull this, pull this up, and I'll count y'all yeah. in on this. Uh, okay, this is right. from a tweet. This went, this went super viral, and I only this went super viral in January, and I missed it until this week. Uh, this is for, uh, from at Tom Rosenthal, who says, "Fen, my nearly four year old daughter recorded her first ever solo song today. She came up with all the words herself, and I helped her a little bit with the tune. It's called Dinosaurs in Love. Ready? Three, two, yep. one, go." Dinosaurs eating people. Dinosaurs in love. Dinosaurs having a party. They eat fruit and cucumber. <laughs> it's so fucking good. It's just wait. Just fucking wait. They fell in love. <laughs> the little cadence. They say thank you. <laughs> A big bang. Oh no! <laughs> and they, what? And they, and they died. <laughs> Damn. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs fell in love, but they didn't say goodbye. Oh my god. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my fucking god. They didn't say goodbye. <laughs> wow! So, so, first of all, first of all, I'm happy to report that the spirit of Daniel Johnston has returned to us in <laughs> this four-year-old. So that is just a Daniel Johnston song. Like, it just is. It's so powerful. It's so strong. Um, uh, two, that's on Spotify now, right? That's a thing you can go give someone a yeah. dollar for. Um, and it's this true. It's a thing that went super viral. A, a four-year-old saying some good so- some good words while her dad, you know, played the piano. Um, and that is... You know, I, obviously, Mickey Mouse killing Goku is not necessarily going to have that crossover appeal. Uh, <laughs> um, but you can consider, but it's in that same spirit. But it's in that in spirit. The Venn diagram. Yeah, exactly. If, I, that, I wish, if I shared that, if I shared that Goku clip on Twitter, right, I could get thousands of likes over that. hundred like percent. Right. You know what fucking um, sells on Twitter. Um, but you yeah. know what I'm saying is that it's, like it's Mickey Mouse killing Goku. Right. We all know how you, it's baby pictures. Yeah. And it's, and it's Mickey Mouse Mickey killing Goku. Goku. That's it. And it's dunks on uh, Mike Bloomberg. Those are the three. <laughs> it's, it's 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 Mike Bloomberg. Hey, I only do some, those if I get paid for it now. Or it's it, it's Rubio saying what everyone wants to smoke free weed and everyone slamming that repeat button and be like, yeah, you know it. Let's go. <laughs> oh, you want to go to a school funded by the government? <laughs> ah. Anyway, my point is like that is the sort of thing that I. I there's a vision of dreams in which someone comes up with something that can make a splash and something that could be really actually super creative and and super like worth the pe- the time of people who aren't just inside of dreams and it's so easy to imagine the world in which that gets exported and then put on itch or put on steam because they pitched it that way. This is not me. Right. This is not yeah. communist Austin being <laughs> like, I think da, 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 platforms and wall gardens. And da. this is, they said this five years ago. And then that, that dream was eradicated by the desire to lock down an ecosystem and, and, and uh, maintain that value inside of that space because the player is the product, right? Like mm-hmm. this is a game that, I don't know, Patrick, you've played the single player content that comes packaged, presumably. You at least checked it out? A little bit of it. I I, I, I checked I mean, it out, but that, I, like that's not what I'm here for. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. You would not have spent $60 for just the content that this comes packaged with. You spend $60 so that you can get access to what other people are creating. And, and, and that's the, I want to be 100% clear. That stuff is only possible to be made with the tool set that Media Molecule spent years creating with their back end. Like, I'm not saying that Media Molecule did not do work. I'm not saying that Media Molecule did sure. not produce value or has not, is not a key part of this but the reason people are giving sony money for this is to then get mickey mouse kills goku it's it's not to get whatever the pre (laughs) i'm sure that that campaign is interesting or that that's that single player content that pre-made content is interesting and worth your time um but i don't think it's my guess and i have not played much of it except for at events it's probably not worth sixty dollars uh, of your of no. your in your wallet, and no, so your like, sixty dollars is 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 churning through this content or watching YouTube videos of right. other people churning through the weird content. And I, what I would hope is, I w- what I wish they'd done was something similar to how Epic handled the Unreal Engine for a long time, which is like, hey, you don't pay for this. Mm-hmm. We take a certain cut once you make a certain amount of money. Yeah, and that there would have been a system in place where, hey, like we made this, like we do feel as you only can make this because we made the foundational aspect. If this, you know, 
we'd like to be your partner. Like, like when they get in on the ground floor, like I don't expect it to be like, hey, yeah, you made it here. Go export it. You own all the copyright. Like they just, but there was a world where you could have put a system in place where you could have had steps along the way that allowed someone to, uh, and which would only help dreams, right? Like mm-hmm. in, in the long run. I do wonder, I don't know how you could get around not having a better system. Totally. If the reports are right about, Horizon Zero Dawn coming to PC. And then there was, a, you know, Jason Schreier had a report on that. And if he reports it, you can pretty much believe it. And there was an Amazon listing about that. If Sony is going to start existing in a world where they're going to pick and choose some games to exist on the PC, certainly dreams would make a ton of oh sense. Oh my God, to be think about how much better that tool set would be. Yeah. Went to that world. Not even just the tool set, but it would benefit the whole ecosystem, right? Yeah. Like people uh, with a keyboard and mouse could create incredible things on the PC, which then would filter down into the, the PlayStation ecosystem. Like all of that would 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 only benefit the dreams verse. And, uh, um, and once you did that, like it's maybe then there is a word like it's hard, it's harder to get around the question, especially once you're on a PC, which is not a closed box in the way that the like the PS4 can't export to Unity. Right. Like you can right. imagine ways they can allow you to yada, yada, yada it. But on the PC, you just can't get around that in the same way. And so my hope is they eventually do port to PC. And then then the dreams world has existed for long enough that you get a, a sense of what it is and what the possibility space is. And with the PC version, it's like, hey, now that we're here and people are going to be creating things on a platform where you do make real ass video games. Uh, not that you, you, you could do quite a bit that already in dreams. Like I have played like games that are I can imagine on my phone or was a downloadable PSN game. But like once it crosses the threshold of the PC, it's a kind of a different story. Yeah. So I, I hope there's they have clearly thought about it. Like it is not the kind of no, thing yeah, where like definitely. no one's had a conversation about this. This is the They've opposite. Had the They've had lots of conversations about it. You know, like it's it's part of what the what the platform is. It's part of the it's part of why a big company would be interested in it is Hey, look! Look at all the stuff that that can get made. How do we get that stuff in front of people to try to bring more people into the into the platform? I, but it is something that you're right. There's a world in which maybe it does come to PC eventually, and then there is some sort of system in place that I would. I want to be clear. I would applaud the shit out of it uh, I, if they did that. I would be like hooting and hollering because that is. That I don't sounds expect incredible. it to happen. Me either. I just like conti- I want to continue pounding the table. <laughs> yes. and asking yes. them. And I want to. I want to so answer something. Very- that comes up a lot when this conversation happens, which is like, come on, Austin. Sometimes people just want to make things to make things. Like, absolutely. They super, super do. And when that happens with, like, your journal and, and your p- privately, or if you do something on, uh, you know, you you open up Fruity Loops and make a beat real quick, the way me and my friends did when we were 15, <laughs> like, that is not then owned by the Fruity Loops <laughs> Corporation. Mead does not own the bad poetry I wrote in my Mead notebooks when I was 15. <laughs> that stuff is good. And it's important, and I'm happy to have it, and I'm happy to have the. I'm happy that people are investing in tool sets. Um, but the point at which you say it is good to be able to just create stuff for the sake of creating it, well, then the tool set should be a public good, right? Like at the point at which you're saying it's it's there should there were at least there should be public goods available or open, you know, uh, 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 what's open source or um, or kind of like free copyright uh, tools made to allow that sort of creation. And and thankfully, there are a lot of those things in, in other in other ways. I don't think Sony has. Any, I'm not saying you know Sony should release Dreams for free on PC. Everyone <laughs> should you know uh, a fucking turkey in the oven, uh, uh, a car in the driveway, and a copy of Dreams on your free government PS4. Hey, I, but you know <laughs> what? I would I wish this I wish the game's model actually was that it was free to play. Yeah, and that there was an ecosystem in which creators could then sell assets. Yes, they could like you, like you know look at like let you know, me the, support the hat, that and like I don't the hat mind economy and. And it, yes. it exists. Team Fortress 2, Dota, like Valve has – makes millions of dollars off of people being creators for things that are just sold into a game they already sell you. They but already – like, there yep. are, And so like they make hand over fist but also people have livelihoods built around that and there's no reason dreams couldn't be – function – Similarly, like yeah. I wish Mario Maker had a, or even just a tip function. A tip like I played so many oh. levels mm-hmm. where like yeah. I would love to be just like that level was cool as hell. I want to give you a dollar. Hey, people um, watching me, go tip this person a dollar because this right. level fucking was sick. Anyway, sorry to make it me, but that's the shit I. <laughs> this is this is that shit. This is that shit. I like. This was literally just is like a hundred percent clarity. This is what I was doing before I was a journalist. Was having this fight in academia. Right. Um, uh, go read. Go read a piece I wrote about abstract play on Clockwork Worlds. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, I got to cut out. I don't know if y'all have anything else. Um, nah, we're good. Uh, do I have to shout? Do I have anything I can shout out? I don't think I. I don't think. 
Uh, I don't think I have any game stuff that I can shout out that's out of embargo yet. Mm. We'll talk about how people are mad at Destiny on Monday. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Um, I think it's very funny that I thought I was the Stellaris champion of, of Waypoint. Oh, yeah. And then, because I stayed up way too late playing Stellaris, and then yesterday, Gita was like, you were staying up until 2 a.m.? And I was like, <laughs> I was like that's childish hours. And then I moused over Gita's profile, and it was like, been playing Stellaris for eight hours. <laughs> so at some point, we'll talk some Stellaris on here probably in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, I don't think I have anything else that I can talk about quite yet. So, um, thank you for joining us as always. Uh, is anyone, is there anything on the site people should go read, Patrick? Oh. Or Rob or Kato. Well, Rob's going to have his ball. There's his big yes, ball. That'll be up by the time they hear this. The, right. Yeah. Um, and with that, uh, uh, Milton Quasti piece about another, uh, Metroid 2 remake. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually been a pretty quiet week for us, but we have a lot of big stuff. Brewing. You can tease Rob, or do we still have to figure out the scheduling? <laughs> <laughs> we still have to figure out the schedule. Okay. All That's right. how it is sometimes. Well, thank you for joining us this week. Uh, good luck, everyone, as, as South Carolina rolls into view uh, this weekend. Lower your expectations. Try yes, just like yes. get, just make your peace now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make your Listen, peace now. It is. I, 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 my goal is to be competitive in South Carolina. It's a marathon. It's exactly. It is not to. I, I would be. I would love to see Bernie win South Carolina. I think being competitive in South Carolina is is, is what I is what I'm hoping for, though genuinely. Um, and then we'll see Super Tuesday, Super Tactical Tuesday. It's, oh, that's it's why not they actually, did that. That's why they do that. Yeah, that's why <laughs> gotcha, they, yeah, yeah. they decided after Tactical Tuesday, in honor of Tactical <laughs> Tuesday, they wanted to, you know, represent and, and, and send love Val Robbins' is that, way. Is that what we should just do on that Tuesday is just play strategy games called oh Super Tactical God. Tuesday as the Maybe. results come in? <laughs> oh, that would be good. Why aren't we streaming? I don't know. I don't Fuck. know. Because the, the, the results wouldn't come in till the until the very anyway, late, so. and I'd be yeah. very depressed all day. <laughs> And very yep. anxious. I'll yeah, because that, could go, that could go choices. south. If you remember how yes. the end of 2016 went, it was just watching a bunch of people get sad. I'm so, <laughs> glad, not... I got, I'm so <laughs> glad I got sick that day and had to go home and sleep and could not be on a stream. I feel bad in retrospect that Danielle had to be on that stream all day as those results were coming in, and it was just depressing. <laughs> anyway, whew. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. That shouts to Bowen for letting us use the track Miss You off the EP Pale Machine. Find out more about that, waypoint.zone slash B-O-E-N. If you have questions, you can send them into gaming at vice.com. We should do a deep question bucket dive soon. Yeah. If you missed it on Monday, yeah. we did our uh, Outer Wilds uh, spoiler cast, which Whew. was a blast. Yeah. Um, we got some we got some corrections on Twitter and elsewhere. <laughs> uh, we also did not mention, I don't think, the marshmallow speed up time thing that someone corrected us on previously, which had not been in the game when I played it. Uh, but trust us, we got our lore corrections. They're out there. Don't worry about it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Austin underscore walking friend waypoint. Twitter.com slash waypoint. Kato, how about you? At A underscore Kato. Wait, what? Yes, A underscore Kato <laughs> underscore appears. Oh. Rob Zachney. At Rob Zachney. <laughs> at Patrick Klepek. <laughs> there you go. And Patrick Klepek. Uh Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a good weekend. And as always, as if, as if the last 20 minutes of me yelling... <laughs> Fucking couldn't couldn't say it any louder. Fuck capitalism. Go home. Here we go. Put my phone on. So. When I went, I went out, went out, went out. Hello. Hey. Yo. Hi. What the fuck is this Dr. Disrespect video? I don't fucking know. Excuse dude. me, what? I'll post it. No, oh, no. I posted it elsewhere. <laughs> is it going around now, or did you just see it in the other chat? No, I just saw it in that thread. Okay. Uh, uh, here you go. That's, that's not just... good, man. What do I think this is? What do we think this is going to be? Are they seriously going to try to do like a Dr. Disrespect appears at some fucking event? 
Probably. God. Probably. The thing is, he's not actually a good performer. No, he's he's terrible. already he's already signed narrative deals, like to do yeah, animated a, series and all that yes. stuff. So yep. like any appearances would be well within uh mm-hmm. the, the previous stuff that he's already set up for himself. He's supposed to do a TV show. So yeah, uh Kirkman's mm-hmm. company signed up. Mm-hmm. Oh my really? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can you make it so I can see Patrick also, Kato? Yeah. Anyway, the Undertaker is going to steal Doctor Disrespect's power. Wait, Patrick, talk some. Hello. <laughs> what keep, lack keep of talking. accountability? <laughs> Wait, keep ah! talking. Ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, it's four. Not, it's not doing the thing it's supposed to do. Well, what's it supposed to do? It's supposed to switch between them. I think it's because you're clicked on to Rob. Am I clear? Oh, where I think so. the fuck is my? Okay, it's, it's over there. There it is. Oh, there you go. But like, what's the? How do I full screen it and make it one person? No. Okay. You click somebody. But then you can only see. It, yes. Th- doesn't it swap at Anything some point? With Skype. This does or that Google too. Or whatever. Does it? I've seen it do it. I've not. <sighs> that makes certain things <clears throat> I talked about yesterday in a meeting. Uh, more difficult. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, Discord is not is not as. I, I mean, could have sworn I've seen it do this, this thing. Do I'm what? Thinking of switch between speakers in full screen, so that like instead of having you, both you try up, to click back on really quick and see if it works again. But I, otherwise, I think we will just do this. Go ahead and talk, Patrick. Hello. Yeah. No. It, it seems like it can switch. Oh, wait. You can live switch. Is that a thing? No, because if it was, we'd be switching to Rob now. Because Rob is making Would you? noise. Yes. I am making noise. I'm Same. using my mechanical keyboard. <laughs> which I respect. <laughs> which I respect. Um. Yeah. Okay. But I can... Okay. I can still do this. Yes. You that, can, might, that might work. Yeah. A person can do it. Yeah, not today. Not needed. No. But All right. In the future, maybe. What's time dot is and do this <coughs> podcast. <laughs> Cast. 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 I'll put I'll put emphasis wherever I want. <laughs> Let's yeah. just watch this Candyman trailer. Oh, did that drop? Yeah, we should now. watch that. I've not seen oh, that yet. No. World premiere. Right, let's clap in. Let's clap. Uh, I was just at three, two, one. That's not how this works. Fourteen seconds. Fourteen <laughs> seconds. All right. Although to up the difficulty of the clap, because now we've got it down, it could be a th- kind of thing where we do do a three, two, one, but you're still doing it according to a to number. The nu- just like, right. mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. We could do that. Three seconds from 20 From wherever you're at. Three... You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Um, where? Right, I'll, 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 yeah, I'm going to paste you link, this trailer. Can you link this? Kato, yeah. can you get this yes. up? I put it in podcast. Thank you. Ah. Uh, uh, there's no rush. You can get there. <laughs> we'll get there. No, it's going anywhere. Right. Uh, I'm just I'm getting scared ahead of in you know mm-hmm. this is gonna be scary. Oh, I see what you're saying, <laughs> Kato. That is the outer wilds yeah. thing. I don't know how That's that happened. Not... I literally clicked this link. Uh huh. <laughs> that is how Google. <laughs> I'd rather listen to that honestly. So wait, 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 wait. can we set up Candyman? Patrick, can you? Oh, you, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Candyman, a uh, Clive Barker short story um, from uh, the '80s about you know. Well, there's been lots of different mythologies of you look into the a mirror and you say something, right? You know, Bloody Mary. Right. Uh, Candyman is a is a, a very famous one uh, from the '80s, and it's being uh, revived in the what is now like the clev- like what is now considered like the clever way to do. I forget what the term is, but it's not. A reboot or a remake, it you know ties like into a, the existing right. mythology. It's like but a is, sequel, but, but, as it, a, but it works as a reboot. It yeah, like reinvigorates seek, seek boot. The, I hate that seek boot. A, no, that feels like <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I'm making no. Uh, <laughs> it's a modern reimagining, but it is a sequel still. But it, but it, yeah. but it isn't happened. because it ties to the mythology. So it's like it, it takes right. place in the same world. A it often requel? acts as a reboot. A requel. The Ricardo said yeah. requel. I don't like any that's of it. better than <laughs> seek boot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start pushing for that one though. Yeah, say that's the canon. Good. Um, 
uh, in which, yes, I don't, I don't know exactly how this ties in. They've been a little cagey, but yes, that it's supposed to not necessarily. And, oh, and also the the way they've been doing this increasingly is they pick and choose which of the mythology they they decide to do. So, like Halloween, the reboot from right. a couple of years ago, right. or the Seek boot from a couple of years ago, <laughs> um, is only canon with the original Halloween. It ignores all the other ones after that. Damn. And I don't know how Candyman is choosing to to do that. Um, or not. So right. anyway, let's right. uh let's click on let's go. Hey, ready? Candyman, Three, Candyman, Candyman. Two, one, play. Candyman. The urban legend is if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection and it kills you. Who would do that? <laughs> candyman. Can- candyman. Candyman. <laughs> candyman. The candyman can. Yeah. Candyman. Candyman. Well, we're still alive. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, they fucked up. See? See? No. <laughs> Bro, there's a, the that's bees. a B. Yeah, you done. This isn't funny! That poor oh, girl, no. she's locked in. She well, she's gonna live. Trying to pee. I feel really connected to this neighborhood. Cabrini Green. Oh project. boy, yeah, it, it uh-huh. really is. The around the corner. Uh-huh. The old candy factory. I'm an artist. You look up a candy man. Yeah, the original was set in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. He's the monster that's part of this neighborhood. Why are you drawn to this? Uh-huh. <laughs> that's good. That's on the nose, but it's good. It's on the nose. To summon him. You should say his name. I dare you. Candyman. 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 <laughs> yeah, no, not my house. Not my house. No. Finally, someone. Uh. Oh fuck! I think uh. I made a mistake. Uh huh. I brought him back. Candyman isn't real. Something's happening to me. He had a purpose for you to be another one of his terrible stories. I guess he found me. I am the writing on the wall. The sweet smell of blood. Be my victim. No. No, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need. That's good. Yeah. It sounds like they're bringing Tony Todd back to be the original and he has to pass on his, his powers. That's, That's great. Right, That's a new generation of, of candy. Again, man. they have to find different ways to mm-hmm. like justify the seek boot. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. So why do people it. say his name? Because it's a kid's game. It's a, it's, you know, it's but a, there's, the, there's, there's grown ass people being like. I'm gonna fuck with this. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it for real. No, I'm real. sorry. I'm just gonna run my art gallery. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be a gentrifier. It's okay. Yeah. Let me just do that. It did. It did kind of seem like a like canned, there was a cappuccino. That's what. I meant to say. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. Mm, could you just? God. There's a little bit of uh. What's that um. Uh, it's the the Japanese manga. They turned into a movie a couple years ago. Death Note. Right. There's uh-huh. a little bit of Death Note vibe <laughs> where it seemed like. Whoever that main character is who seems to have been picked to be the new Candyman is like, hey, why don't you just say it? Right. Come on, just say it, man. Like, like There's a little bit of him going around being like, (laughs) maybe maybe this is a little bit of a it follows thing where like, hey, if you say it, he'll come to you and then I don't got to deal with this bullshit anymore. (laughs) It's out of my, it's out of my, my, yeah, exactly, exactly. God. Gotta pass on this Candyman virus. So, is that going in the pod? Because that was a trailer length where none of us said anything because we were too enmeshed. I think we were too. I think, too, I think that, that's good post Leave pod. It. I think yeah. I think that that's I think that that's Fine acceptable. Yeah. I think it's acceptable. I think enough. it speaks to the fact that we couldn't clown on it. Yeah, because we were like, fuck, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <Yep>. It was good. <laughs> Um, I want to see the other the, the the movie that that director. So that's produced by by uh, Jordan, Jordan Peele, Peele. and co written and co written, uh, and it's directed by Nita Costa, which is which is yeah, who did Little Woods, did, uh, which I've heard really good things about, and I never got yep. around to seeing, and now I'm mad at myself for having not seen it yet. 
Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm curious to see. Uh, uh, my understanding is that like the the '80s movie uh, is. Like it's still g- good, but uh, uh-huh. racially problematic. Yeah, um, weird. But that, but that, <laughs> yeah, shocking. Um, and that the fact that this like retelling or like you know setting it in justification, having mm-hmm. Jordan Peele involved, like there's there was there's a lot of sharp material there that you could do something interesting with. They made a bunch of bad sequels, which I my truly my favorite thing in the world is to find a horror franchise that goes past. I don't know how far. I think Candyman just goes to three. Okay, there's not like a um, seven part. It's not one of those. Candyman does not go to space, uh, which is usually, um, yeah, so Candyman only goes to three. Candyman, 1992. Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh, 95. Candyman, Day of the Dead, 99. But it's always like, if you can find a franchise, you're like, you've got 10 bad movies, one good movie, and then nine bad movies ahead of you. Oh, nothing makes my heart sing Uh <laughs> Even more, and uh, but I've only seen the the first Candyman. I've never seen the the sequel, so I'm excited to to dive in and farewell farewell to the flesh. Fair was that was that the was that the tag the second one? Oh, farewell. To the, I thought that was I thought that was like the general <laughs> tagline, but that doesn't make sense. Can't, uh, <laughs> you know? Is there a is there like a a thing? Is there like a how would you summarize? Well, how would it's Patrick's motto actually? Oh, farewell to the, the flesh yeah, when he gotcha. runs. Right. Uh, uh-huh. Hey, I'm. <laughs> Farewell to the farewell flesh. Farewell to the flesh. Uh, when they that's, ask him that's that, that's been my the, guiding ethos. At the uh, at, at the the South Carolina uh, Democratic uh, primary debate, they ended by saying, uh, "Patrick Klepek, what is your motto?" And he said, "Farewell <laughs> to the flesh." You know what I always say. <laughs> Ever since I was a little boy. And then everyone starts weirdly cheering. <laughs> yeah, woo! No more flesh. Yeah. No more flesh. <laughs> oh god. Did you know that see it turns out you had to give a pound of flesh to get into <laughs> to get this in. uh, oh, debate audience god. and that explains the curious god. enthusiasm. God. Oh fuck. Uh the slasher crossover Freddy vs. Jason also inspired Earmax to want to create a Candyman vs. Hellraiser crossover. But Clive Barker, originator of both uh, franchises, yeah. recommended against it. Instead, a crossover with the Leprechaun film series was ah. also considered, Ooh. but Tony Todd, who plays Candyman, immediately flat out refused to participate in such a <laughs> project, <laughs> <laughs> saying he had too much respect for the character to be, see him used in such a purpose. Mm-hmm. A potential mm-hmm. Candyman God force damn. centered on a professor related to Candyman at an all-girls school in New England was also considered good. This is the thing is, I think Tony Todd, I think if you look at, at Candyman, the original Candyman, you could, at the time, feel like, oh wow, this is this is like a slasher villain with a a story that ties to racial injustice because his like history is tied to like a lynch mob and you know. Uh, uh, well, also, folks. there just weren't right. black right, um, right. like Here. villain mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. They were just they they were set up. You know, go. There's a great um, history of uh, of of. Blacks in Cinema on um, uh, Shudder, the horror um, mm. streaming series. I don't have the name of it in front of me, but it goes through a lot of like the really troubled history of, you know, where, you know, uh, lots of African-Americans are at the center of horror films, but for very bad reasons. And the reason Candyman, despite like its problems, was always really heralded in certain circles was because it was like, finally you have like this character, like you can, you know, you can have this character to semi root for in the way that you often root for the villains of of horror films. And it actually had... Um, you know, spoke to certain things at least of the time. You know, like like anything from that you know that era. You know, we look at it with a different lens now. But um, there's a reason Candyman had a certain uh, staying power. Right. Right. Uh all right. Um, y'all ready to do a podcast? Podcast. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Forgot Tony Todd was also the villain of Final Destination. Sorry. Anyway. Continue. Oh, <laughs> to your was. intro. He, he was. was. Karma? I was, was going to say that thing felt like uh, like a Final Destination, quite frankly. The entire, like, ah, inevitably, mm-hmm. somehow, you're going to get fucked here. What was it that triggered the Final Destination? Is it ch- cheating death triggers Final Destination? Yeah, yeah, if you were supposed to die, and then you cheated death, then death like they comes. Cheated death they didn't cheat death. It's not like, right. yeah, it's not well, like that- they tricked death. It's just like they survived something. No, mm. well, that's like, fucked up. No, because okay. you get a premonition. Yeah, like th- that's oh. it's, it's that you somehow get a inkling. Like the then the, don't the fucking opening give me the premonition. The, Just kill me. Well, but that's not death. Well, look, that's not that's not death's problem. Yeah, Who death's gonna control that part. Who does mm-hmm. I don't know the full. <laughs> I rewatch. Kill that never. motherfucker. Don't kill me. Kill the motherfucker. <laughs> give me premonitions. <laughs> Treat the fucking disease, not the symptom. Damn. Damn. I don't know the mythology. I can't tell you what 
uh, prompts the film. I've watched all those films multiple times. But yeah. It's been uh-huh. a while. Uh-huh. God. Good movies. The first two in particular are fantastic. They're legitimately great. Anyway. All right. Uh, 